Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome to this new series that I'm going to be starting. I don't know what I'm going to be calling it, but it's just going to be a series where I'll be answering your questions uh, in the form of a video, right? So I get a lot of questions from you guys, uh, you know, on various topics, uh, some of them related to some of my older videos, but also new topics. And uh, one of the questions that I received recently on Twitter was uh, pertaining to my previous or my one of my older videos on how to crack uh, zip and rar archives more specifically password protected archives uh, with john the ripper now uh, the actual individual who posted this question pointed out something very important that i did not clarify in that video primarily because uh, you know we weren't there yet or that uh, new version of rar wasn't released or you know wasn't wasn't being used uh, you know at that point in time so uh, the issue that he was having, and you should be able to see the tweet on your screen right now, is uh, he's having an issue with cracking uh, RAR5 archives, password protected archives, uh, with John the Ripper. Now, there is an issue with John the Ripper, not really related to the fact that, or not really related to the process of obtaining the hash of a particular archive, but actually cracking it. So, this video is going to be focused on how to crack uh, zip and RAR archives. Um, with Hashcat, right? And of course, we're going to be utilizing a few John the Ripper utilities like zip to john and rar to john to essentially obtain uh, the hashes for these password protected archives. So what I've done here is uh, in my downloads folder, you can see that I have a file called protected.txt. And I'll just open that up. As you can see, this is just basic data. This is a very simple example, right? And what I want to do is I want to create an archive, right? And I'm you know, from this perspective, I am currently working as a, you know, end user or someone who wants to create, a, you know, zip or RAR archive that they would like to password protect and then share with someone else, right? So I'll create the archive here and I'm doing this on Kali Linux. Um, so the file name, uh, we can just call it uh, protected. I don't want to specify any extension. So let's start off with cracking password protected zip archives. So for the actual, um, for, for the type of archive, I'm going to specify zip and under other options, I'll specify a password because I want to keep things simple. We're just going to use a password like password 321, right? And I'll hit create and that's going to create protected.zip. So what do I do now? If I wanted to crack this as an attacker, if I find a password protected zip archive, um, you can see I'm currently within my downloads directory. The first step would be to obtain the hash of that archive, right? And how, how can I do this? Well, you need to have John the Ripper installed. And one of the great utilities that comes with John the Ripper is the zip to John utility. This uh, will essentially allow you to specify the archive. So protected.zip, you can then output the actual hash into a file. So I'll call this ziphash.txt. There we are, and I can cap the contents of ziphash.txt. And you can see this is the actual hash, right? So right over here, uh, let me see if I can find that. There we are. Now, this additional information specified at the beginning and at the end of this hash is really only useful for John the Ripper. Because we're going to be using Hashcat, we want to get rid of this information. So I'll say vim uh, zip hash.txt and I'll get rid of the actual archive name. So protected.zip as well as the file that is within that particular archive. So there we are, I'll get rid of that. And uh, at the end of the file, I'll also get rid of, um, of the same thing, the, the actual archive name uh, or the zip file name, as well as uh, the actual file within that particular zip, uh, zip file. So I'll get rid of that there. And we want to only have the actual type of archive specified here. And this is of course for, you know, the purpose of cracking hashes. So uh, I can just leave it as is and I can write and quit and we can actually get started with the cracking process. So how would we crack that particular hash with Hashcat? Well, first things first, you need to get an understanding of how Hashcat works. So I'll open up the documentation for Hashcat. I, def I really recommend that you go through the documentation because it'll explain a lot. Now, before I go through all the modes or rather, yeah, I think that's what we're doing. Yeah. So before we go through all the modes, we need to get an understanding of the syntax. So you can see right over here at the top of the documentation, Hashcat 6.2.5, the usage is as follows. We specify Hashcat, options, the actual hash or the file containing the hash, 
and we then specify the dictionary or the, the word list that we would like to perform our attack with. So whenever you're cracking a hash with hashcat, you really need to specify the hash type, and that can be done by using the M option. So you can see this allows you to specify the hash type. And uh, again, the way that Hashcat does this is it provides you with a list of hashes or hash types and their unique ID, right? So you can see if I wanted to crack MD5, I can specify the actual hash type as, uh, or I can say a hyphen M and say zero, and that will know, or that will tell Hashcat that this is an MD5 hash that I want to crack. And in the context of um, in the context of a zip file, which I'll get to in a second, we can also obtain or get that uh, that specific hash type in um, you know by taking a look at the various hash modes available. The other option that we need to specify is going to be the attack mode, right? So uh, the attack mode is referenced below, which I'll get to, and that is specified or denoted uh, using the hyphen a option. So the attack mode really just, uh, again, is just used to specify the type of attack that you're trying to perform. Are you trying to perform, uh, you know, a simple word list uh, attack? Are you trying to perform a brute force attack? Uh, let me see if I can find that there. So there we are. We have attack mode. So you have your straight. Uh, we have a combination, brute force attack, hybrid word list plus a mask, uh, hybrid mask plus a word list, and an association attack. So uh, again, Given the fact that we're dealing with a zip file, the most obvious hash type that we're dealing with, and it did say zip2, which tells us that we're dealing with winzip. Now, let me see if I can find the actual winzip ID here. So uh, I know we have uh, pkzip there, and there we are. So that's winzip here. So that is 13,600. So that's the actual hash mode that we need to specify. All right, so in order to do this with hashcat, I'm just going to say hashcat and then I specify the attack type in this case, or the attack mode. In this case, I'll just perform a direct um, a direct attack. So I'll say uh, A0, and then I can specify the mode, which in this case is 13,600. I then say zip hash.txt, or specify the file that contains the hash. And because I'm performing a, uh, you know, a dictionary or word list attack, I can say user share. I'll specify the word list that I'm going to use. So we'll say we want to use rocky.txt. So I'll hit enter, uh, give this a couple of seconds, and uh, it looks like it cracked it because it's a very simple, uh, it was a very simple password that we used and it actually exists within rockyou.txt. Now I'll be making separate videos covering how to utilize the other attack modes, but remember in this case, we're, we're just learning about how to do it. So as you can see here, it actually highlights the password for that zip archive. So password three to one and uh, we've essentially cracked that password protected uh, zip archive. All right, so now let's take a look at how to crack a, um, a password protected RAR file or archive, if you will. Now, this will tie into the question the individual asked me and was having an issue with, right? So I'll actually walk you through that process. So we've already created, uh, you know, we've taken a look at how to crack the zip archive. So what I'll do is I'll click on protected.txt and I'll create the archive. Uh, so I'll just give that a couple of seconds. There we are. And instead of calling it pass uh, protected.txt, I'll just say protected.rar. So that's what we're focusing on now. As for the password, I can say, you know, in this case, we can say, you know, password one, two, three, for example, instead of password three to one, just to show you that this does indeed work. All right. So now that we've generated the archive, the password protected archive, as an attacker, what can we do? You know, what really is our first step? Well, we can utilize the utility rar to john right, to get the actual hash, and then I specify, I can then specify the actual RAR archive here, and then output the, the actual hash into its own file. So I can say RAR hash, um, or I can just say, you know, yeah, we can just call it RAR hashes.txt, and I can hit enter. So this is what was happening. So I, uh, let me just cut out the contents of that hash right, is you can see that it's uh, utilizing RAR5 instead of RAR3. Now, John the Ripper, as far as I know, can actually crack RAR5 uh, hashes, but uh, I'll, I'll actually show you what the problem was. So in my previous video on how to crack, you know, RAR and zip files uh, or archives with John the Ripper, I specified or said that you can, spe you know, you can say John, and then the format in the case of RAR is, you know, format equal RAR, and then specify the actual file that contains the hash. So I'll hit enter. And this was the issue. And this is the issue that people have been getting, right? Is it'll tell you that no password hashes are loaded, which is very weird, because again, we generated the hash with 
you know, RAR to John. Now this will, again, this won't work even if you get rid of the, uh, the actual file or archive name that's been appended at the beginning of the actual hash. Now, uh, again, as I said, I don't really know if there's a fix for this. All I can show you or demonstrate is how to crack this hash with uh, Hashcat. So what we can do here is uh, let me just modify this, uh, the actual hash itself, and let me get rid of the, uh, the actual archive name at the beginning, because whenever you're cracking with Hashcat, we really don't need any of that. Um, so there we are. So that's done. So how do we crack it with Hashcat? Uh, the only thing we need to change really here is going to be the mode, right? Uh, or the hash type, if you will. Uh, when cracking zip archives, we used the, uh, the, we used the, the actual hash mode uh, 13,600. In this case, because we're cracking RAR5, we're going to be using 13,000, I believe. So let me just take a look at the various uh, modes here, the hash modes. And we are looking for... Um, let me see if I can actually find it. This is usually very, uh, there we are. So 13,000, that's RAR5. If you're cracking uh, RAR3 uh, archive, then again, you can specify the various hash modes here. That's one of the reasons why I actually recommend that you use Hashcat moving forward because, you know, it has great documentation and you won't run into the issues that, you know, you've been running into if you followed the previous video. So uh, in this case, we can try and use the default attack mode. So, you know, we can also perform a brute force, any of the other modes. Um, so what I'll do is I'll say hash cat and we'll say the hash mode or the hash type is 13,000. And then we can specify rar hashes.txt. And then the word list that I'm going to use is under user share word lists, uh, word lists, rocku.txt. I'll hit enter and uh, Let's see whether, yeah, so there we are. That was cracked in a few seconds for obvious reasons that I've just explained. I specified a dictionary file that contains the password already, so it's going to be much faster. Now, of course, as I said, Hashcat is quite an advanced tool that allows you to generate, uh, you know, your own word list based on specific parameters. And that can be done by specifying the character set, as you can see here. And I'll be making another video that will cover that process, uh, but I just wanted to showcase how this can be done or how you can crack password protected zip and rar archives uh, with hashcat so again uh, this is again just going to be a very simple series where i'll be answering your questions in video format uh, let me know what you guys think if you like this series if you'd like me to continue uh, you know working on this series uh, and yeah that's going to be it for this video thank you very much for watching if you have any feedback or questions leave them in the comment section and i'll be seeing you in the next video a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Tafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you keep us making even more high-quality content for you guys. So thank you.